هو نصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد الممنوع من الصرف In English these words are called diptotes I don't know why they're called diptotes I don't know what diptotes means But um, that's what they're called They're called diptotes A diptote or a ممنوع من الصرف is a word which does not receive tanween or kasras, regardless of the situation. So the word will never receive tanween, will never receive kasra. When, is it, when it is in a position where it is supposed to receive kasra, it will instead receive one fatha. So it can't get tanween, that's already there. If it's supposed to, if it's, whenever it's in a position where it's supposed to get tanween, it will always get one. And it can't get tanween, that's already there. It cannot get kasra either. If it's in a position where it's supposed to get a kasra, it will get one fatha. This is, this is what, it, what a mamnur min sarf is. There are eight categories of diptotes in the Arabic language. The first is any feminine proper noun. Any feminine proper noun. What is a proper noun? Name, right. So any feminine name. Zainabu, Aminatu. Doesn't matter if it has a tamar buta at the end. Doesn't have a tamar buta at the end. Any feminine name in Arabic is considered one of these mamnur min as-sarf. Number two, any masculine name which ends with a tamar buta. There are a lot of examples of that. Usamatu, Talhatu, right. These are all words that are Masculine names with tamar butas at the end. These words also fall under the same category. Number three, masculine names that end with alif noon. There's also a lot of examples of these. Uthman, Adnan, Salman, Sa'adan. These are all names, right? All of these names are also amongst them of norm and sarf. These are all different categories. You're going to have to remember these categories. And just, you're going to have to know which words fall under what category, right? Any word that fits one of these eight will not get tanween, will not get kasra. Number four, adjectives on the pattern of fa'lanu. If you remember, we learned this already at the end of the first semester's book. Kaslanu, jaw'anu, atshanu, mal'anu. Everyone remember these, these? Right, so these words are adjectives, sifats, on the pattern of fa'lanu. They're on the pattern of fa'lanu. Kaslanu, atshanu, jaw'anu. Right? They mean thirsty, hungry, lazy. These are adjectives, sifats, and they end with alif noon basically. That's the whole thing. They're on the pattern of fa'lanu. Right? So you remember, right? <laughs> MashaAllah. Right? So these are. These are, all, these are another one of the categories. Number five, masculine names on the pattern of af'alu. This is why I used to tell you that my name is mamnur min as-sarf, does not get kasra. This is the reason. Ahmadu, it's a name that comes under the pattern of af'alu. Ahmadu, there's some other examples they have in the book. But like for example, Ahmadu, Anwaru, right? Anwar is a name. Amjadu. Right? These are all names that are on the pattern of af'alu. Right? Any one of these names will not receive a kasra. Number six, adjectives on the pattern of af'alu. So, same pattern, but for adjectives. And most of the adjectives that fall in this category are colors. Aswadu, ahmaru, abyadu. Right? These are all colors. But they're considered adjectives, right? In Arabic, a color is considered an adjective. So that's why they said an adjective that is on the pattern of af'alu. But most of those adjectives will be colors. Then they have any non-Arabic proper noun. And I taught you, I taught you this before too. Like inkaltara, all these words, they don't change usually. They're very, very subtle changes. So these words don't receive kasra, don't receive tanween, and sometimes they don't even receive any other haraka. They just stay mabni, right? Like if they have a yamak surah or something at the end, right? The example that I wrote here is London. London, right? So Landanu 
will not get kasra, will not get tanween. Right? For example, Pakistanu. Right? For example, um, I'm trying not to use words that have alif at the end, like Amerika, because those words don't get harakas anyway. But, um, Brazilu, right? These are all words that are non-Arabic. Non-Arabic. Like, for example, in the Quran, وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ لِأَبِيهِ Azara. His father's name was Azar. Azaru is getting a fatha. Even though it's Li Azar, right? Li is harfajar. It should be Li Azari. But it's getting a fatha because Azar is a non Arabic name. Right? You understand? So any non Arabic name, just like Ibrahim, Ibrahim is a non Arabic name. Yaqub, right? These are all non Arabic names. Hmm. And then number eight. This one is the most complicated one. There's no real, real way to explain this one. You just have to memorize this one. Any of the following broken plural patterns will not receive kasra, will not receive tanween. The first one, let me zoom this in for you so you can see a little better. The first one, I wrote the harakas on them. Af'ila'u. Any word, any broken plural on the wazan, on the pattern of af'ila'u. The example, asdiqa'u. Asdiqa'u means friends, right? Plural of sadiq. Asdiqa'u, friends. Another example would be aghniya'u, right? Plural of ghaniyun, rich. For example, aqwiya'u, plural of qawiyun, which means strong, right? And then you have bi fu'ala'u. The broken plural, fu'ala'u. Example, fuqara'u. Fakirun, right? Means poor. Fuqara'u. Then you have like Zumala'u, Zamilun. Remember what does Zamilun mean? Classmate. Classmate, right? Zamilun, Zumala'u. Then you have like Wuzara'u, Wazirun, minister. Wuzara'u. So all these words are broken plurals on the pattern of Fu'ala'u. And then you have Mafa'ilu. This one is the most common out of the four. This is Masajidu, right? Masajid. This is like makatibu, this is like fanadiku, all these words. These are, this is the most common one, I would say, out of the four. Again, these words don't get tanween, don't get kasra. Wa anna al masajida lillah. Masajida, right? Hmm. Then you have D, mafa'ilu. This one is probably the least common out of the four. Mafatihu, right? Plural of miftahun, key. Mafatihu. Then, for example, mindilun. Mindilun is handkerchief. Manadilu, right? This is all on the wazan of mafailu, right? And then, for example, like finjanun, fanajinu. These are all broken plurals on the wazan of mafailu. So, these four broken plural patterns do not receive tanween, do not receive kasra. Now let me ask you a question. Look at the board. The word Atibbau. Let's put this here. And then let's put this here. So these are the broken plural patterns, right? Everyone see them? Yes. Okay. So now, Atibba'u, what is this the plural of? Doctors. Hmm? Doctors. Doctors, right? Is this one of these? No. It is. Let me show you. This is... This is not this is not gonna happen a lot, okay? The reason why I'm showing you this word is because this is one of the special words. This word has tashdeed. And remember I told you before that tashdeed is double letters? So this is actually Atibba'u. Right? You see this? Afrila'u, Asdiqa'u. This falls under the same category. Fa in Arabic, in the Arabic language. Well, I guess I'm teaching about root letters today. So in the Arabic language, root letters are three. Fa, 
Ayn Lam is normally the representation of a root letter. Every, normally, all words have three root letters, and they're represented by Fa, Ayn, and Lam. The first root letter is considered the Fa Kalima. Kalima means letter. Ayn Kalima and Lam Kalima. These are root letters. Okay? So, this is the representation of root letters in Arabic. Now, words like, for example, Tabibun is on the wazan, on the pattern of Fa'ilun. So, if you see, anything besides Fa'in Lam is an extra letter. That's why over here the Ya is extra. And that's why it's not going to be any other letter. It's only going to be Ya, because it's on the pattern of Fa'il. The Fa will be different because this is the Fa Kalima. Over here, Ta is the Fa Kalima, Ba is the Ain Kalima, and Ba is the Lam Kalima. So the, the original letters for this word is Ta, Ba, Ba. See, I'll give you another example. We have an easy word, for example, like Mudarrisun. Mudarrisun, right? This is on the pattern of Mufa'ilun. You understand? So now, the original letters, Dal, Ra, Sin. These are your Hurufa Asli, which are called the root letters. You see that, right? Mufa'ilun. You see, this has a Tashdeed, just like Mudarrisun. The reason why it's getting a Tashdeed means there's two Ain Kalimas in that word. Two of the same root letter. Da ra sin, right? Ra is one of the root letters, right? There's two of the ains in this pattern, therefore, there's two ra's in this word. Let me give you another one. For example, for example, mamnur, mamnur min sarf, right? Mamnur min sarf, we're learning today, right? Mamnur means that the stopped, or the one who was. Um, halted, you could say, right? Blocked. Mamnur comes on the pattern of maf'ul. Sound familiar? What is maf'ul? Right. So any word that comes under the pattern of maf'ul means that the action has been done upon this thing. You understand? For example, maktub means written. Something that is written. Means the action of writing was done upon this thing. You understand? So any word that falls under the pattern of maf'ul. And all the other patterns have their own khasiyat. And I told you this before too. That any other pattern will have its own specific meaning for that pattern. Right? So now, maf'ulun. Fa. You have to find the fa'ain and the lam, right? Fa'ain lam. Waw and meme are extra, correct? This is extra. This is extra. Meem, noon, ayn. There's your, your three root letters. You see that? I'm going to write that a different way for you. There's your three root letters. Now, tell me the three root letters for this word. It's the same root letters as kitab, by the way. It's ka, ka, ta, ba. Ka, ta, ba. Exactly. Ka, ta, ba. This is kitabun fi'alun. See, everything has a pattern. Everything has an original three-letter three letter pattern or three-letter root. So now, let's look at this now. Here are your patterns, right? Af'ilau, fu'alau, mafa'ilu, mafa'ilu, right? So now, now you'll know how to fit a word onto the pattern and find out if it's one of these. Mamnur min as sarf right? So look, the first one, asdiqa'u, right? 
The pattern is af'ila'u. This is one of the patterns that becomes mamnur min as-sarf. So you have to make sure that this word is on this pattern. How do you make sure? Find the extra letters first. So there's your first extra letter that matches, right? There's your second extra letter, the alif. You see the alif, af'ila, that matches, right? And then your hamza, third extra letter, right? Fa'ain lam remains. Remember, I told you the root letters are represented by fa'ain and lam, right? So fa'ain lam remains. Sad dal qaf. Sad dal qaf. These are root letters. Listen, this is how you will know if this word fits on this or not. And yes, it does fit. Why? Because the fa'in lam kalima are exactly in the same position as the pattern. Understand? You could try another one. The second one, fu'ala'u, right? So the pattern is fu'ala'u. Fuqara'u, right, is the word that we're trying to figure out. Fa'in lam. Everything besides that is extra. Alif is extra, Hamza is extra. Fa qafra, fa ain la. Listen. Then you have mafailu. Mafailu, right? The word we're using masajidu, right? Mim extra, alif extra. Fa ain lam remains. Take out the mim, take out the alif, sin jim dal. Your root letters. Sajada means to prostrate, right? Masajid. Masjid comes from that same word. And then, for example, you have the last one, Mafa'ilu, right? With a ya. Again, it's the same concept. Everything besides Fa'ain Lam, take it out of the word. So the meme is extra, Alif is extra, Ya is extra, right? These are the extra letters. You're left with Lam Ain Fa Mafatihu. Same thing. Take out this letter, take out this letter, take out this letter. You're left with your root letters. Fataha. What does Fataha mean? To open. And the word Mafatih means? Keys. Key. Why do you think they say mafatih for keys? Because the root, the root is to open, exactly. This is, Like for example, we learned the adjectives on the pattern of fa'lanu, right? Like kaslanu, atshanu. Right. So look, if we say, fa'lanu is the thing, right? Fa'lanu, right? Actually, I'm going to erase this line because we need the bottom part. Fa'lanu, right? And then let's say we say, Jawanu. Jawan means? That's Atshan. Hungry. Right. So now, same thing. Fa, Ain, Lam. Last two letters, the Alif and the Noon, are not. You understand? Jim, Waw, Ain. Alif and Noon, not. You understand? So the Huruf, the Huruf Asli, the original letters for this word, Jim, Waw, Ain. الَّذِي أَطْعَمَهُمْ مِنْ جُور There's your huruf, your, your original. Jur. Jur means hunger. Everyone understand, right? This is the part that I was telling you about in first semester. This is now you're entering, you're, you're starting to scratch the surface of Arabic now. This is now you're going into detail. The beauty of the Arabic language comes from this part. Every word that has the same root letter as another word only has the same root letters because the meaning is connected just like keys keys and open have the exact same root letters because they both do the same thing well we learned these, these wasn't these patterns at some point? well
No, no, see, the thing is, broken plurals don't have, like, rules, right? So you can't really memorize, I mean, technically, you could write all the broken plural patterns in the Arabic language and memorize them. But, like, I don't think that's practical, right? So we're going to go into root letters in more detail, that's for sure. This is just the beginning. I mean, this is not going to come on the exam. This is, I was just showing you this so that you can understand how the patterns work. But um, we're going to go into this a lot more detail. And when it comes to the broken plural patterns, it's experience. You will, you will start seeing words, their patterns are very similar. Like for example, the word ikhwatun. Remember we were having such trouble with the word ikhwatun? Because we didn't know if it was masculine or feminine. This is a broken plural pattern. You understand? Hmm. So these are, these are all random broken plurals. Could be anything from ikhwatun to... Like biladun. Right? That's two broken plurals right there, totally opposite of each other. You have no idea which, how they have anything in common. You get what I'm saying, right? Mm -hmm. No. This is a two-letter word. A little more complicated. What's the original of Ikhwatun? Uh, Akhun. How are you supposed to put Akhun on Fa'in Lam? Mm. It's only two, right? Mm. This is a little more detailed. I think we should leave this for another time. There's way too much, I think, at that point. But, but you, you understand where I'm coming from, right? See, now you can learn how to use a dictionary to some extent. The way the dictionary works is you to look up a word, you have to look up the root letters. You have to know the three root letters. Then you go to that page, and it'll have the three root letters written in the top left corner. Any word that comes under that root letter will be in that category. And then you'll have to look for it over there. Same thing with verbs. Now you'll know why verbs have, get taz at the end. Like, you know the whole... Come on. Like, you know that whole thing we learned about, like, Fa'alti means you, one woman did. Fa'altu means I did. Fa'alat means she did. Why do you think Arabic is able to do that? Because as long as the root letters are intact, by adding and subtracting letters, you understand, right? So look, let me show you. You have daraba. You can turn this. Daraba is the root letter, right? Daraba. Because fa'ala, right? Fa'inlam. Right? So now, you can turn daraba into daraba this is the same thing as fa'ala for dual you can turn this into darabna which is fa'alna you can turn this into darabu which is fa'alu and as if that's not enough you can turn this into yadribu like we learned the other day yuhibbu uhibbu remember this is now present tense verbs. You could turn this into yadribu because it's still on the same pattern of yafalu, fa'ain lam. So you see, right? The whole point is in Arabic, the root letters fa'ain lam. That's how you find like fa'ain lam are the representation of the root letters. That's how you find the root letters. There is no word that escapes this in the Arabic language. This is the reason why the Arabic language's words totally outweigh any other language's words. Because there's so many combinations you can make with just three letters. Right? And you can add and subtract as many letters as you want. As long as those three letters are intact, it will make sense. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's why the Quran, when it came down, so many words they didn't know about. They never heard before. Yeah. It was just new combinations. Uh, Arabic language is, till today, ever-growing language. Because you can, even now, it's like, you know, uh, so, like, you have, like, a person who takes um, chemicals yeah. and mixes them with other chemicals to make new chemical. 
Or like, for example, the first person to make green, right? He, he took yellow and blue and put it together and made green, right? So imagine the Arabic language is like a variety of random combinations of colors. You put any random color together and you get a new color. And you just keep going and going and going. You know what I'm saying, right? Definitely, that's why. That's exactly why. How are you supposed to make rules for something that doesn't have like, no limit? It just keeps going, exactly. So now, see, now we can, instead of, I feel like we should go over the lesson when these guys come back, inshallah. Because right now we, I mean, the lesson itself, right? We can go over that when they come back. But right now, let's do some practice of, uh, what do you call it? Original letters, root letters. Maybe you guys will learn something out of this. So give me a word that you always wondered about its root letter or something. I don't know, some word that you think you want to know the root letter about, and then we'll do it together. No, you don't, right? You can look through the book. We have time. Yes, of course names have, of course names have thing. How do you think that they said all names on the pattern of af'alu, all names on the pattern of fa'lanu? Of course they have root letters. Like for example, my name, Ahmadu and Muhammad, they have the exact same root letters. How do you know? This is on the pattern of af'al, this is on the pattern of muf'al. Af'al and muf'al. So now, Take out the alif, you're left with fa'in lam, right? Yeah. Hamida, right? Ha mim dal. Over here, take out the meme. The ayn is double. That's why Muhammad, right? The the ayn, the letter is double. Ha mim dal. You're left with the same original letters. Even Mahmud is the same exact one. On the pattern of maf'ul. Take out the meme, take out the wow, you're left with fa ayn lam. Hamida. See? No, no, no. See, Abdullah is two different words. Yeah, servant of Allah. So Abd is the actual huruf, is the actual root letters. Ain ba da. It comes from Ain ba dal, which means to worship. That's why slaves of Allah are meant to worship. Abd. It comes from worship. And then Allah. See, Allah is like a special name, right? But if we were to make root letters for it, it would be. Alif, Lam, Ha. And what does Alif, Lam, Ha stand for? Ila, which means? God. God. So the root letters of Allah is God. Like I said, all the root letters have a reason. See, like, Allah is on the, on the pattern of Fa'al. You understand? Fa'al. Fa'al means the one who does extra amount of things, right? Even in the Arabic language, darrab means who wants, the one who hit, hits Allah. Prophet ﷺ, one time a woman came to him and she said, I want to get married and I have a, I have a pro, uh, proposal from Muawiyah radiallahu anhu and Ibn Juhum radiallahu anhu and the prob, Abu Juhum or something along those lines. Allah but the Prophet ﷺ said, This Abu Juhum. Darrabun lin nisa. He hits women a lot. So darrab fa'al means, you know, Allah says in the Quran, fa'alun lima yurid, does whatever he wants. Fa'al why? Because fa'al means to do whatever, like to do an excess amount of that thing. So now fa'al, fa'ain, take out the alif, and then ha, ilah, 
which means Allah, right? Which means Lord. If what? Right. No, it's, it's, it's a bit more complicated than that. Yeah, it's a bit more complicated than that. It still has three letters root. Okay, here, I'll show you. So, Akhun is actually Akhun. Just like Abun is actually Abun. That's why when you say your father, you don't say Abuka, you say Abuka. Where do you think the wow is coming from? You know what I'm saying, right? So now you know why Ikhwatun is the way it is. Because it's on the wazan of Fa'latun. You understand? Fa'ain Lam, take out the ta, you're left with Ikhun or Akhun. Alif Khawa. Like I said, it's a bit more complicated than, <laughs> than, it's, than it is. Um, for now, don't go too mu- don't kill yourself too much about this. We're, this is all third semester stuff now. This is we're gonna learn this in third semester, inshallah. Right now, I don't want it that it's the last lesson and you're just drilling yourself, you know, with a brand new material. So right now, focus on all the rest of the stuff in the book. But at least now you have some kind of understanding of what these root letters are and how they work, right? Here are the patterns that I think you should definitely know. You should definitely know fa'lan because this comes up a lot. Sakran. Sakran means drunk, right? Yeah, these are all these are words that come up a lot. A lot, a lot, right? And then um, what's that one I told you that was really famous? Yes, mafa'ilu. There you go. Mafa'ilu. This is another one you should definitely learn. Mafa'ilu. Reason is because there's so many words that come under that pattern, right? And then I would say learn Afa'ilu too, to be honest. Because Afa'ilu, all the colors, a lot of colors come under Afa'ilu. Ahmaru. Huh? Right, two of them, yeah, come under this, yeah. yeah. Afa'ilu, uh, most of the colors actually come under this pattern. Aswad, black, ahmar, red, right? So look, I'm going to write them all here. You'll see the similarities. Remember, only the alif is extra. Fa'in lam is going to be different the whole time. Fa'in lam only represents the root letters. So you have ahmar, you have aswad, this is red, this is black. You have abyad, that's white. You have azraq, that's blue. You have Akhdar, right, there you go. Akhdar, that's green. So you see like most of the colors all under come under Afal. You understand? I do, yeah, Afalu, I do. But over there, like these are these are patterns for nouns. Over there, it's coming as a verb, right? Afalu. So over there, the alif is different than the alif here. That alif is referring to me. That's what the alif is for. Nafalu. Mm-hmm. Yep, in that. Yep. So does everyone understand? Maybe some something that we just went over. The. Like I said, don't beat yourself too, up too much about the patterns. We're going get, to get into it, inshallah, next semester. The main thing was Mamnur al-Sarf, right? But, alhamdulillah, now you know a little bit about how, what root letters are, how they work, how you can find them if need be, right? So, you have... Just those eight. Those eight yeah, just those eight. I mean, you, there will probably be more here and there as we go along, but these are the main eight, general eight, yep. Yeah. General eight. Any word that fits one of these eight descriptions does not get tanween, does not get kasra. <laughs>